he always knew how to make us laugh. And with a new documentary in the works, John Candy is back in the spotlight and his daughter will join us live in just a minute. But before we chat with her, let's take a look at the legacy of her famous dad. Oh, that feels good. Oh God, I'm telling you, my dogs are barking today. <sighs> oh. When you hear the name John Candy, what words come to mind? Everyone knows he was funny. Honey, he's waving. Oh, oh, oh he was. he's gone. Oh, he's gone. Oh, all right. All right, great. But how about lovable? Where do you live? In the city. Do you have a house? Apartment. On a rent? Rent. What do you do for a living? Lots of things. Where's your office? I don't have one. How come? I don't need one. Where's your wife? Don't have one. How come? It's a long story. Do you have kids? No, I don't. How come? It's an even longer story. Or maybe honest. A gold medal is a wonderful thing. But if you're not enough without it, you'll never be enough with it. What about humble? You know what your problem is? You're in love with this girl and you're trying to convince yourself you're not. And how about legendary? Just a figment of my imagination. The cat's stewing you. The oyster shucking you, I told him. You got the right ta ta, but the wrong ho ho. Boyfriend is not sharp. Scout's on it. And you can tell him I said so. Asking anyone to pin down your favorite John Candy movie is a difficult feat. Well, I went to this doctor, and well, he told me I, I swallowed a lot of aggression along with a lot of pizzas. <laughs> pizzas. But there's one thing we can all agree on. He left us too soon. Good evening. Some stories we're following. Tributes pour in for one of Canada's most famous entertainers. John Candy is dead at the age of 43. Candy was in Mexico working on a movie. He died of a heart attack. So many. Wow. wow. Jennifer Candy was just 14 years old when her dad passed away. Today, we're lucky enough to have her on our show. Please welcome Jennifer Candy yes, to Jennifer. BBL. Jennifer. Wow. Welcome. Jennifer, thank you so much for being here. On behalf of all of us, I think we all love your dad. It kind of got us a little yeah. emotional just watching all those great <laughs> clips. But your dad said his iconic Uncle Buck character was actually based on him as a dad. What parts of that role are actually your dad that you remember? Oh, it's a combination. I feel like it's the, the, the fun-loving kind of jokester all the time, but then the very serious dad you know it was kind of like you know don't mess around or you know do this do that um in a good way like it was kind of the balance but he just oh he was just he was fun he was just a, you know he was your fun dad to have <laughs> he was that guy that we saw in the movies right yeah. ever making you laugh yeah. all the time and everyone around him yeah he was always making you laugh um but then just always just you know calm and and mellow and you know just having just living his best life and kind of being very family oriented and making sure that we're all kind of like stay grounded and that we're just, you know, doing family things, you know, when he's home because he always had to go away for work and then he always, you know, brought us along with him and then vice of, you know, when he was home, he was home and he was present, which was always, you know, that was, I think a father's day or we were trains, planes and automobiles with the mustache and the perm and <laughs> oh, wow. he went on family vacations. It was fun. Wow. That's amazing. So, Jennifer, you've been so transparent about uh, the life and death of your father, which, I mean, is yeah. such a gift to us um, as fans. So what do you remember about the day that your father passed? Ooh. Uh, do, do you remember it like any other day except for this one just sticks with you forever? Um, I Do you know what, as weird as it is, I remember I was studying for a vocabulary test in school, and I remember you know, the day before studying, talking to my dad on the phone and then waking up the next day worried about tests at school and all that. And then getting pulled out of class mm. moments before I had to take this test and them not saying anything. Um, it was the principal and then going to get my brother from his class, which was like he was a couple years younger than me and then going. Um, to the rectory um, and where my mom was and then they told us and then I just broke down crying and then I sat down and then I stopped crying for a while um, because I just couldn't process all of it and it was just a very weird mind numbing day. Yeah, <laughs> that's a yeah, that's a perfect wow. way to put it. My the day my father passed away, I kind of knew, so I had to tell people. And it's weird, you kind of snap into this other mode where you're just like making calls and being efficient because you don't even allow yourself the time to process because there's so many things mm -hmm. going on. So it takes a while. 
it takes a while to process. I think it still takes how many or however old I'm now. It's like, it's, you're always processing. Cause I remember there was people that were telling me, you, you have to cry, you have to grieve. And I was like, I, I can't, like, I just I physically don't know how to do that right now in public. Um, so I would, it was probably if I was by myself or with just my mom or brother, but it was such a, you know, a whirlwind of people yes. always around. You've got family, you've got friends. And then that was also as a kid, awesome, because you're seeing all your friends in your family. And then, but it's for the worst, right. you know, worst reason. That's right. Well, I mean, it continues on the legacy and your son Finley, uh, you know, he didn't get yeah. a chance to know his grandfather. So what do you tell him about his grandpa, John? Oh, well, we just tell him whenever we watch a movie or if he's on right now, we kind of go, you know, there's there's grandpa and um, he, you know, he kind of sees, acknowledges. We've got a picture um, in our house that's um, a, a painting or a drawing of Barf from Spaceballs yes. and it's at the bottom of our stairs. And Aww. he, oh, he knows, there it is. Uh, that's his favorite painting. And Aww. we tell him, you know, he, he says goodnight to grandpa. Um, and he gives, pretends to give it a hug or gives it a hug. Um, so he knows that that's his grandpa. Um, and he knows that grandpa's not around. Um, but I think as any four year old doesn't quite understand the concept, but you know, as I haven't, we haven't directly said, you know, grandpa's not around. You just, I can't do that yet. Yeah. But when he's older and he understands, then we'll get there. But he just knows that, you know, grandpa's not here. You know, he has another grandpa that is alive and well, and you know, so he, he gets that concept. Um, so he, he sometimes goes, he goes, Grandpa, go bye bye. I said, Yes, Grandpa, Grandpa, go bye bye. But you know that this is your grandpa. And he, you know, he at school, he had a Dia de los Muertos and he brought in that picture. Oh, and he was oh showing gosh. it to all his kids at school. So it I, was cute. I oh. love that. And in, in October, Keeping the Legacy Alive, Brian Reynolds revealed that he and Colin Hanks are working on a documentary about your dad. You and your brother have been going through old footage and photos of your dad for it. Was there one memory that you loved reliving? when you saw it and we only have about 30 seconds left yeah well, uh, it's, it was amazing do you know what we saw going through archival footage it, it, there's a lot of great reliving our birthday parties which was kind of surreal wow. um and just our dad being the host and my mom being the host and them interacting with people and it was just kind of this weird it takes you back to that time of your birthdays and it was fun and i just i loved seeing all those that footage what it's like home it's home movies yeah what a gift thank you for sharing yeah, your dad you. with us uh you can follow jennifer on instagram to get the latest on her current projects along with updates on her dad's documentary also get into the holiday spirit by helping jennifer with a project near and dear to her it's called letters to santa it's a 24-hour improv and music benefit show on december 19th in chicago you can visit 24hourmarathon.org for more info jennifer Thank you. Thank we'll be you right so back. Much. Thank Thanks, you. Jennifer. Thanks, guys.